So that was the book where I first put forward the idea of morphic resonance. Okay. Which was a, now that I listened to it, that was because of all these experiences, right? Well, it was, I had the idea of a memory in nature when I was in Cambridge before I went to India to live there. Okay. Um, I, I arrived at it through working on how plants grow, how um, form arises. That was what I was doing research on. Um, and I realized that the, there had to be some kind of form-shaping influence in plants. That what makes an oak leaf an oak leaf and a beech leaf a beech leaf? They have the same kinds of chemicals, the same hormones, yet they're different shapes. The same in our bodies, what makes an arm an arm and a leg a leg? They've got the same DNA, the same proteins, the same chemistry. I mean, they're chemically identical, yet they have different shapes. So it's a bit like buildings. You can build out of bricks and cement and timber. You can build different shaped buildings, go down a suburban street, and there'll be lots of houses. They look different, but they're built out of the same materials. So it's not the materials, the molecules that shape it. It's the something else. Um, so within biology was the idea of morphogenetic fields, which are form-shaping fields. Um, I got very interested in that. I didn't invent that idea. It had been around for 50 years or more. Um, but I had the idea that these fields must be inherited, not through DNA, which is to do with the inheritance of proteins, but in some other way. And then I realized if there was a kind of memory in nature, a huge number of phenomena would become much easier to understand. And that was really the germ of the idea of morphic resonance, which I had in Cambridge. But it was obvious it was going to be very controversial scientifically. And when I discussed it with friends in my college and in the biochemistry laboratory where I worked, uh, it was clear that most people didn't take it seriously and um, treated it as a kind of joke. Um, How do you deal with that? Because you've never been afraid to put these controversial ideas out there. Well, I, I realized that I couldn't, if I was going to put out an idea as controversial as this, I had to be much better prepared than just having the idea. I had to think about it for a long time to see if it really held up. I had to look at the evidence and see whether there was already evidence for this. Um, I had to see how it fitted in with physics and chemistry, and I had to think it through. I was doing that while I was working in, in India in, in the Agricultural Institute. Uh, in my spare time, I was thinking about this and reading and discussing it with people. And the funny thing is, you see, that it, whereas in Cambridge, most people thought this was a kind of incredibly shocking new idea, when I discussed it with my Hindu friends, most of them said, oh, there is nothing new in this idea. They said, you know, ancient rishis have said this thousands of years ago. The idea of a memory in nature is pretty standard in Hindu and Buddhist philosophy. Um, so I was living, suddenly found myself living in a culture where people didn't find the idea shocking at all. Um, they, they felt the basic idea must be right, um, but they weren't very interested in trying to prove it scientifically because they were just so sure it must be right. You know, what's the point proving it? Continue watching this fascinating conversation for free by clicking on the link below to visit our website, learn from the best minds in the world, and connect with a community of passionate people building the best versions of themselves. Just click on the link below, and I'll see you on the inside.